Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. The title of our series is Healing, Health and Long Life. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious, glorious love for us. Father, we thank you for your exceeding great and precious promises. Father, we thank you for your great mercy, your rich mercy and your compassion. Father, we appreciate your love for us. And Father, we pray you teach us your word. And Father, we pray you teach us your ways and your thoughts and your ideas concerning healing, health and long life to us. And Father, we pray that people who are listening to this message receive their healing and receive the wisdom to live a long, fruitful, satisfied life. And Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray your anointing drive out every form of sickness and every form of disease and every form of pain. And Father, we pray your anointing destroy every yoke Remove every burden, break every chain and Father we pray you meet the needs of people, whatever it is, whether it is financial or family needs or whatever need they have in their life. Father we pray you meet the need. You are God Almighty, nothing is impossible for you. Father you are greater than all. Father we pray you show yourself strong on their behalf. And Father, we thank you for your marvelous, marvelous help for us. Father, you are good, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. And we, sit, we set our eyes upon you. And Father, we are looking to you. And Father, we thank you for helping us to receive from you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. And we serve El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, for whom nothing is impossible. Nothing is too difficult. Now, one of my favorite passages in the Bible is in Isaiah 43, or 44 actually. Hallelujah to Jesus. Isaiah 44. This is a passage that we, you know, we are reading at this point of time in our life pretty often. And um, look at this, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, you, this is not our text, I'm just you know, some, I'm, I'm giving this to encourage you and lift you up. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. Notice, God is what? God is the Lord. He is our Redeemer. And he formed us in the womb. He is the Creator. And then God says this for good measure. I am the Lord that makes all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is great. Our God is awesome. Our God is mighty powerful. Right? Yeah, he, he, he spoke the world into existence. Heavens are his handiwork. That's the God we serve. That should give us hope in all situations. In all situations, no matter what we are facing in our life. Right? Maybe you are standing at the door of opportunity and you may feel, okay, I don't feel sufficient in myself. I don't feel uh, equipped to handle this. You can set your eyes upon God and your sufficiency will come from Him. Paul says this, you know, our sufficiency comes from God. It's God who makes us sufficient. It's God who makes us able. Hallelujah. Nay. Maybe you are facing a problem which is just beyond your ability to face, ability to overcome. But then you are not alone. God Almighty is with you. Set your eyes on Him. Look to Him. Trust in Him. Lean on Him. And He will show Himself strong on your behalf. You should always live with this knowledge. I serve God Almighty. 
I serve the living God. I serve the God who hears my prayers, who answers my prayers, who is the very present help in trouble, who is with me and he wants me to succeed, he wants me to prosper. You know, these are the kind of thoughts that you should have about God. All these things that I've just told you are based on scriptures. <laughs> Right? Clearly taught in scriptures. These are not fantasies, you know. And if these thoughts dwell in you and if they are strong in you, you will have hope, you will have faith and you can overcome and you will overcome. Hallelujah. So find scriptures that talk about truth like this. Meditate on them often. Right? It will build faith in you. It will build hope in you. And that will propel your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, let's go to our text today. Go with me to Isaiah. <laughs> we might even use this also as our text. I already have two texts actually. So maybe we can add this also. This is good, isn't it? Hallelujah. <laughs> go with me to Exodus 15. Verse 26. And said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I'll put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians. Notice this. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Read the last part with me, out loud, really loud, right? For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now God is uh, saying this in covenant language. This is one of the great covenant names of Yehovah God. Right? Uh, the name that is used here is Yehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us, the Lord who mends us, the Lord our physician. Right? He heals us, he mends us. Right? And uh, it is important that you, you take hold of this. Um, God is revealing himself to his people as the one that heals them. He's saying, if you have, if you need healing, you have me. I'm right here. I will heal you. It's interesting when he said this, because, you know, they, they came to this place called Mara. At that time, it was not called Mara. They later named it Mara, right? And uh, once they came to this place, they found some water. So, you know, they, they have been traveling without water for three days. And then when, when they found, finally found water, you, you could understand. Uh, <laughs> their hopes would have been raised and they, they have this great desire to go and drink of that water and uh, you know, uh, hoping to quench the thirst and they are all happy, they are all delighted. But the moment they you know, taste the water, it's bitter. It is bitter. They could not drink it. Right? That, that would produce a huge disappointment in them, isn't it? And um, so they started murmuring. Right? <laughs> they started murmuring against Moses. And by murmuring against Moses, essentially they are murmuring against God. Because, you know, Moses is just following God. In fact, it was God who was leading them. God was leading them by going before them in the pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire. Right? So he was leading them and he brought them to this spot. He knows that the water is bitter. Why did God bring them here? Right? Didn't he know that, that the water is bitter and it's not good for drinking? Now God wanted to teach them something. Right? God wanted them to look to him. Now I say this often, but you know, but it's relevant, so I'm saying it again. It's amazing to me. Three days they walked with God. They didn't have water. Nobody thought to pray to God and ask for water. Nobody. Right? They just carried on for three days without water. They could have asked God. He was, he was walking before them. They can see him. Right? Visibly with their two eyes. You know, his presence is going before them in the pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire. Right? And, and nobody thought to pray about this matter. Call upon God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if, 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 I don't, if I don't have water for half a day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call upon God. <laughs> right? I mean, in our house, we use a lot of water. I, I'm pretty sure that's the case in your house also, right? 
going without water for three days is unthinkable. I mean, half a day. <laughs> we are going to look at every possible way to fix whatever the issue is, right? But, um, you know, these guys just carried on. without Nobody prayed, nobody looked to God. And that, that was a weakness in Israel, right? You know, Moses was doing all the praying for them. Whenever they are in trouble, they, they would just normally resort to grumbling and complaining. But it, it, it would most, uh, most of the time, almost every time, it is just Moses doing the praying. And um, here, God is revealing a truth to them. Right, and uh, he he wants them to take hold of this so that if they face a situation like this again, they would know uh, that God would come, and God would heal. Right, He healed the waters there. It was bitter. It was not worthy of drinking. You know, bitter waters produce death. God healed the water, and it became sweet good for drinking instead of producing death it produced life hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you you could see similar thing happening in um, um second kings during the time of elisha you know the water i believe it was in jericho it was you know the land is good but the water was just bad totally bad and um so the people in that place uh they, they um they actually came to um, Elisha and this is what they said. Let's go to Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19. The men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. The water was so bad that it even made the ground barren. And so Elisha said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the springs of the waters, and cast the salt in them. And said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were, say that with me, healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Now, this, these people, they did something smart. They, they understood that the prophet is there in the place. They could go. They could ask him. And, you know, God would work through him and get the job done. And um, so, <laughs> they, they did something that the Israelites didn't do. Right? So, when God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee, I am Jehovah Rapha, he was revealing himself to his people so that if a situation like this arises again, they would look to him, they would call upon him, and he would heal them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Maybe you have a disease or a sickness that has made your life bitter, that's producing bitterness. Maybe there is a pain in your body that's making your life bitter. You know, God will heal you. The same God who said to the Israelites, I am Jehovah Rapha, is saying to you, I am Jehovah Rapha. I will heal you. Hallelujah. Our God does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So notice this. When you are facing any kind of sickness or disease, Right, or pain in your body. God wants you to look to Him. God wants you to put your trust in Him. God wants you to have faith in Him so that He can help you. He wants to do this. Now, Israel, Israel didn't go and say, Oh God, reveal yourself to us. Right? No, no, they didn't. God, out of his own volition, voluntarily, he is telling them, Hey, listen, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Right? What God revealed to them was, was for that generation, the generation after that, and also for entire mankind. Right? Anybody who would put his faith in him, in God, 
God is saying, hey, I am the Lord that healeth you. So look to me. If you have bitterness, if you have sickness, if you have disease, if you have pain, look to me. Have faith in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's look at another passage. That's our second text. The first text is uh, Exodus 15, 26. The second text is here in um, Second Chronicles chapter 16. Chapter 16. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's read from verse 12. And Asa, in the thirty and the ninth year of his reign, was deceased in his feet. This is a king. Asa was the king of Judah. And till his decease was exceeding great. Yet in his decease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And as a result, Asa died. Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Now what is the Bible teaching here? Is it saying that you should not go to physicians? That is not what it is saying at all. But then what is it saying? Now you have to have some background to Asa to understand this verse better. Asa to begin with in his, uh, in his life, he, he is one of the good kings. right? He served uh, God alone, Ehovah God alone. He did not go after idols. He did not do idolatry. None of that. Right? And in fact, he, he trusted God. He walked in the ways of God. God prospered him. God gave him rest for 10 years. And then the Ethiopians came against him who were more numerous than uh, the, you know, the army of Israel, I mean Judah. And yet God, when Asa called upon God, he, his prayers is one of the most famous prayers in the Bible. If you go with me to Second Chronicles chapter 14. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. Verse 11, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. Notice again, he is, what is he saying? See, he knows God. He is not some stranger who doesn't know God. He is a covenant man. He is a descendant of David. He knows God. Hallelujah. Notice how beautifully he is saying, it is nothing with thee to help. And, and you should take that to heart. You should memorize this passage. If you are facing any sickness or disease, you should learn to, to magnify God above your disease. Now some people keep talking about their disease. Do you know what I am facing? <laughs> I have cancer. They, 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 they talk about cancer in some hushed tones or I have tumor. Eh? I have a severe heart problem. Right? I mean, sometimes the way that people say it itself, it shows that, you know, in their mind, uh, they, 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 they have built an altar unto this disease. You know, it's, it's, it's like, um, oh, thou great and uh, mighty disease. You know, that, that's how they think about it in their mind. And it, it comes out in their words when they are talking about their uh, sickness or their disease. Right? Now build an altar unto God in your heart. Right? Magnify God. You now the Bible says, let such as love your salvation, say the Lord be magnified. Like Asa. Asa was, is magnifying God. He knows that the army will wipe him out, naturally speaking. But then he knows God is greater. So he's saying, it's nothing for you to help us. You are great, you are mighty, you are almighty. You can do this. This is easy for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. See, that's how you need to learn to think. If you're going to overcome any terminal disease or any uh, disease that has been continuing for a long periods of time, you need to develop this thought in your mind. This is nothing. God is greater. This is, you know, God can heal this. God is almighty. For God to heal me, it, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's easy. It's not difficult for him. You, you should develop that thinking in your mind. You should read passages like this over and over again until that, that thought gets implanted in your heart. You, you, you should say, learn, learn. sometimes it will help you if you, say, if you say it out loud, you know. That's how you take a thought 
by saying it and so you should say this cancer is nothing it's nothing before god god can heal it like this my god is almighty my god is greater my god is for me my god will heal me i serve yehova rafa the lord who heals me you know you should learn to speak like that especially when when your mind is wavering your mind is going on a different tangent and you attempt you are getting tempted to be depressed and worried and you know you are becoming all sulky you should open your mouth and say these things every word that i said is based on bible i was just par- paraphrasing various verses of the bible for you right learn to speak that you know last year i was aff- afflicted with something serious you know and um, <laughs> sometimes i couldn't sleep for entire nights entire night and day for almost 10 days i didn't sleep at all it is it is just just couldn't sleep I, I, for no reason i i would close my eyes and lie down in the bed sleep was not there at all and um, th- that was the worst thing that i faced in my life till now and uh, i would i would keep saying repeatedly over and over again jesus is my healer jesus is my refuge jesus is my fortress jesus shed his whole precious and holy blood for me jesus is my healer jesus i would just keep saying that over and over and over and over again sometimes throughout the night and uh, almost through and um, often through the daytime also right you, you have to get your mind now sometimes when when you are facing hard situations your mind will want to you know will run wild and your emotions will boil up and uh, you are not feeling so good <laughs> and th- things would be horrible you know uh, and during those times the, the only way to get your mind under control is by using your words right because your mind has your words have the ability to, to take hold of your mind right and it has the ability to grasp it and then bring it in line and god has put that ability in your tongue and the bible talks about how you know a horse can be bridled with a bit the same way the, your mind and your emotions can be bridled with your words they can be right so learn to use your words if when you are tempted to be worry when you are when when we are feeling depressed and when you when you are losing hope open your mouth and speak take the bible open the bible look at words like this and read them over and over again see that's how you put your trust in god that's how you look to god hallelujah hallelujah to jesus right this is how you keep your eyes set on god yeah right? the practice that it will help you it will help you and um all right now so you can see that this this man knows how to pray he knows god he knows how to trust god he knows how to have faith in god he knows how to lean on god but then over a period of time in his life he stopped that Eh? after that great victory over the Ethi- ethiopians for 25 years he had peace so in this man's reign he, for 35 years he had peace that's the first 10 years before the ethiopians came and after that another 25 years it's that that's unheard of in those days you know <laughs> god gave that rest the bible says that plainly god gave that rest and yet when he faced a problem with with basha and the syrians right God actually planned to hand over the king of Syria into the hand of Asa. You know that would have made him even more powerful, even more greater. But uh, you know he failed uh, to take that promotion because instead of trusting in God, he opted for natural sources, natural solutions. Right? Instead of overcoming Basha by faith and then overcoming the king of Syria by faith, he he made a you know a covenant with the, with the king of syria right he sent him tribute and said okay you fight for me against uh, the king of israel right. and as a result he didn't enjoy that victory which god actually planned for him 
right and th- th- that incident is me- mentioned before this sickness these things reveal that esa over a period of time stopped trusting in god he stopped looking to god when he was in trouble previously he he looked to god when he was in trouble but now after you know after this so many years of rest he spiritually has become dull he has become complacent he has become spiritually lazy and he is not looking to god now he is a powerful king a well established king and his his mind is uh, you know going towards more natural approach to solve problems instead of trusting in god and that's the first thing i want to emphasize in today's message trust in god right if you are facing a sickness if you are facing disease if you are facing any problems with your health right you desire long life but you don't know if you will live long trust in god and we are going to look at all these three things healing health and long life hmm what's the first key to enjoy healing to receive healing to enjoy good health to enjoy long life what's the first key you need to learn to trust in god you need to put your faith in god that's the number one thing everything else comes after that first thing is have faith in god trust in god see all the other things are good i know mean, there are good tips to take care of your health there are good natural laws that you you should make use of all that is there but the first thing is trust in god faith in god that's the first thing god made you god made your body he knit you together in your mother's womb he created the organs and he knows how to fix them when they are not working properly and if a disease attacks that body which he made he knows how to fix it right he is the manufacturer he knows exactly what to do to fix it and he has the ability and the willingness to fix it that's why he is revealing himself to us saying i am the lord that healeth thee hallelujah so let's go back to the, that verse in second uh, chronicles chapter 16 verse 1 so what's the problem now that we have some background look at this and asa in the 30 and the 9th year of his reign was deceased in the feet but he did not look to god so it began as a, as a, as a, as a normal disease but then over a period of time that disease became exceeding great so he knew he had a disease right he probably went to doc- he, uh, by the according to the bible he did go to the doctors he took some treatment the treatment did not work but it it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse but at no point of time did he think that he should look to god now he has changed his heart has turned at one point of time he was a man who walked with god when he he was strong in his faith and in the time of trouble he called upon god he put his trust in god and god delivered him he has tested all that before but over a period of time his heart has become dull spiritually right he has stopped trusting in god he has become more natural minded and now god trusting god did not even enter his mind eh he he just went to the physicians and he only went to the physician and the bible says yet in his disease he sought not to the lord but to the physicians the problem here is not that he went to the physicians you can go to the physicians nothing wrong with that right the bible is not against doctors right so if if you if you think that you know you need to go to a physician go to a physician but first go to god look to god right you know there are some people who can believe god and receive healing without going to doctors but then some people are not at that level of faith and if you're not there you know don't get condemned right trust god and take the treatment and over a period of time you know feed on scriptures like this they feed on healing scriptures and feed on faith building scriptures and develop your faith right hallelujah so um here the point is 
what was the problem the problem was he never sought god to help him with this particular problem he did not look to god at all that was the problem that he he could have put his trust in god and he could have gone to physicians or he could have just put his trust in god and got healed he he could have done either of those two things and it wouldn't have been a problem the problem here was he just did not look to god exactly like what the israelites did three days walking with god but didn't look to god at all <laughs> right and then god said okay these guys are not getting it let me reveal myself to them and god voluntarily revealed himself saying look i am the lord that healeth thee right hallelujah and we should not be like that eh? our first response should be faith in god let's look at another passage go with me to mark chapter 4 mark chapter 4 Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Mark chapter 4. And um, here, the disciples faced a problem, right? Uh, let's read from verse 35. And the same day when the even evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There, was, there were also with him other little ships. So the one that Jesus was traveling on was not a small ship. It, it, it was a pretty big ship, right? And there were other ships which were little, but this one was not little. Hallelujah. And uh, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, and so that it was now full. Now these guys are facing a great storm of wind. Right? This was serious trouble. And uh, many of them were fishermen. They are not strangers to a wind or to a storm or to the waves or to the water. Uh, they, they know, right? They, they have faced this before in their time pretty, pretty often, right? So these guys know about the, um, uh, the storm, what's the response, what you should do, how you should handle the ship, what are the steps to take to prevent sinking. And they, they know, right? And uh, they, they are not easily scared. So they tried everything they could do. Right? They tried. <laughs> But um, now the ship is full. It has come to a place where uh, it's beyond their ability. So all this time, from the time the storm began until the time it was full, nobody thought of calling upon God. Not one. Nobody. And these are disciples of Jesus. That Jesus is teaching them faith constantly. And when they did go to God, what did they say? Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now, instead of calling upon God and saying, deliver us. Right? Instead of using their faith in God, what are they saying? They are grumbling. Exactly like what the, the Israelites did. You know, grumbling and complaining. This is not prayer. Oh, don't you care that I'm perishing? That's not prayer. That's complaint. Right? There is no faith in that. There, there is no no. Uh, no hope, no faith, nothing. They are saying, actually, we are perishing and you are sleeping without any care. Right? <laughs> I want to show you something. Go with me to Psalm 107. Because, why am I saying they should have had faith? Because in Psalms 107, this is a great psalm. You should take some time to read it. Right? A beautiful passage. And in this particular uh, psalm, that there is a very um, relevant passage. Right? Uh, hallelujah to Jesus. Let's read from verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works of the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And it specifically talks about people who go down to the sea. Look at verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Right? They see the sea and all the fishes and all the various things that you see in the sea. and uh, They can see the work of God. They can see this is a handiwork of God. Right? They, they marvel at it. And verse 25, For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind which lifts up the waves thereof. They mount up to heaven, they go down again to the depths, their soul is melted because of trouble. 
so they when they face a storm right and, and 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 they go up and down you know how it's not land right so the water moves up the ship goes up with it the water goes down the ship goes down with it right and after some time of you know after a few times of going up and down and seeing heavy storm and heavy wind and the water coming into the ship this their soul is melted because of trouble you can see a similar situation in uh, jonah right in the book of jonah and they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end this is something what this this is similar to what happened to the uh, disciples and they tried everything every trick that they know every every step that they know everything that they have learned nothing worked now they are come to their wits end and finally they are going to god with their complaint not really a prayer no no faith nothing in that instead they are just saying master don't you care it, it's it's a blame they are actually blaming jesus you know you are irresponsible here you know you are not caring for us you are not doing anything you know you, you are happily sleeping and we are about to die here <laughs> that's what they're saying that's not prayer right they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man at their wits end then they cry unto the lord so once they came to their wits end then they cried unto the lord in their trouble ne right? and when they do cry unto the lord and that word cry meaning they called upon god that's not talking about a boohoo right it's talking about them calling upon god fervently right so they called upon god in their trouble and he brings them out of their distresses he makes the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still so this is taught in the bible and they have seen jesus lord it over sickness and disease and the works of the devil they have seen jesus and that same jesus has said let's go to the other side they should have had faith in god at the least they should have called upon god right but instead they did nothing they they tried every possible natural solution and then chose to blame god and that's why jesus got up and said where's your faith right jesus expected them to have faith right but they didn't so what is the expectation of god when you are in when you are facing any sickness any disease any trouble in your health he expects you to have faith in him that's the number one thing we'll talk about other things but the first thing is have faith in god that's the first one that's the number one thing that god expects out of you in the midst of your sickness in the midst of your you know disease and pain he wants you to look to him he wants you to call upon him he wants you to have faith in him that's the first thing and if you will do that he will heal you he will restore health to you he will strengthen you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we'll talk more about this in the next message and please to share this message with your friends family relatives fellow neighbors and fellow believers and fellow servants of god share it with them god will bless you thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon